Have you recently been become frustrated with your tractor's ignition system? Points gone bad and corroded? Condenser failed? Coil bad? It's a common problem, unfortunately. Today we're not running our tractors like our grandfathers did on a daily basis. Time and nature lead to breakdowns in the ignition system. It might be worthwhile taking a look at an electronic ignition from Steiner Tractor Parts. These ignitions will allow you to completely eliminate the ignition breaker points as well as the condenser, both of which today are hard to find um, that, that hold up well and last very long. So come with us, take a look, and we'll show you how to assess what you need in an electronic ignition system and how to get it installed. So the first thing to check out when you're looking at an electronic ignition system is to determine if your tractor has 12 volt or 6 volt system and also determine are you going to be using a positive or negative ground. Something to keep in mind at least for John Deere tractors, anything prior to the mid 60s would have used a positive ground from the factory. That doesn't mean that your tractor is currently still positive ground but it's the starting point. So if you're unsure and if your tractor for instance does not have a battery hooked up, if you have a positive or negative ground you can actually look at the ignition coil the wire that comes from your coil to your distributor. Whatever the polarity is in the coil, and they're usually marked at the top where there's two posts, whatever that polarity is, the wire going to your coil is typically or should be the polarity of your ground. So if it's a positive from the coil wire to the, to the, the uh, distributor, that would be a positive ground versus, versus if it was negative, it would be a negative ground on the coil side to your distributor. So in the situation with our 1959 model 430W John Deere tractor, uh, we know that it's a 6 volt system, positive ground, but we just want to double check that. So using a, volt, a multimeter or voltmeter, I'm using a positive lead to ground. I've got the ignition switch turned on, and now I'm connecting to the wire that goes from your coil to the distributor. 6 point, well, 6.28 volts. Now, something we might consider here if the system were to have an, a, a ballast resistor in, in the line we would probably not see a full six volts but because I'm seeing more than six volts which my guess is is we're that's almost approximately the same voltage you'd see on the on the post of your battery uh, means that there's no resistor in this system uh, for this particular application we don't want a resistor in this system there's no need for it um, but it, ultimately it just depends on the, your individual tractor system. Typically for our old tractors there's no need um, because our ignition, uh, electronic ignition kits are made to work at a full 6 or 12 volts which is actually a little bit more than 6 and a little bit more than 12 volts. So we know now what we need. We've got the right kit ordered because of course we've checked that out prior but uh, that's something you definitely want to take a look at prior to ordering your kit so that you know you've got the right kit for your tractor. So after taking the hood off on this application, it's much easier to do this with the hood off of the tractor. Um, you'll see that the ignition coil was recently replaced due to a faulty one. Actually, it was leaking uh, oil out of the coil inside. Um, you'll notice the positive terminal, because this is positive ground, positive terminal is the one that goes down to our distributor. And the negative is the input side coming from the ignition switch. So what we're going to be doing for this application is we're going to be changing the ignition coil to the flamethrower version uh, because it's, we ultimately want more, more voltage. Um, we are going to be removing the ignition points, the breaker points, and the condenser coil uh, from the system. We'll be taking this out and uh, we'll show you in a minute what we're going to do to the, uh, to the system. It's pretty simple. So before we can install the electronic ignition, we've got to remove the old breaker points and condenser. We'll also be removing the terminal block that uh, insulates uh, the insulator and stud that goes through for, to conduct power through the distributor. Also note that the, this is a Delco Remy um, ignition system. So um, although you know, the similar principles will apply regardless of the manufacturer, uh, this one is specific to the Delco Remy systems used on the John Deere's. So we're going to remove all these components and come back. We'll have all these out of the housing um, and we'll be ready to install the electronic ignition. 
All right, so here's the components of our uh, Pertronics electronic ignition kit. This is the part number we've got for two cylinder, six volt positive ground, 1123P6. So um, inside the kit, we've got, uh, we've got our uh, little collar. It's got magnets down inside that slips over the distributor shaft. You notice that it's made in such a way that it can only be installed in one direction or one spot. Um, and we've got the actual module that as this this magnet with the rotor spins uh, it picks up where the magnet is and it tells the, the module when to send fire to the individual cylinders. And we've got a little pigtail grommet that will be used to install back in the hole where the terminal came out. And then a couple um, loop type terminals. The only thing we'll need in addition to this is we're actually going to need to ground one side of the coil, the positive side of the coil. So we're going to be changing the way we're doing the wiring. The instructions are very informative um, in regard to what we need to do. Um, there's also a frequently asked questions list as well. So a very simple system. Probably the most difficult part is to ensure that this rotor is seated all the way down on the distributor shaft. So we'll get to work installing and come back in a second. So we're going to start the wires, put the grommet, or the two wires through the grommet, and then pull the wires into place. You don't want any extra wire inside of the, uh, inside of the module, or inside your distributor, rather. And you'll notice these two small holes here um, ensure proper placement of the module. And from there, the screw that held down our, our points and condense, or our breaker points, you used to tighten it back, just like so. So in the meantime, we'll go ahead and pull this snug. Taking care not to pull it too hard. Sometimes I've, I've pulled through in the past, and it's not good to do that. I like to place the wires just about like so. The next step is to install the cap. Now you'll notice there is one spot that's kind of where the, the point or the lobe of the distributor shaft is. A lot of times what I'll do is take a paint pen, mark the lobe to make it easier in lining up, and mark the lobe here, here, and here to make it easy to see using a paint pen. You certainly don't have to do this, but we'll also see that here's my lobe. I don't know if the camera can zoom in to see where the lobe is here, the high spot. We're going to push this down on ever so gently. You don't want to get carried away. You can break these I think I may resort to using, sometimes I've had luck taking a, a socket that's just a little bit larger than this and just using hand pressure. So I'm using an 11 16 socket, that's what I found that works good and it's critical you only use hand pressure and gently kind of work in a rotating motion. Um, I'm going to try to get it all the way down and seated. There we are. Now look all the way around to make sure there's nothing contacting. And you can kind of see uh, that there's even relationship all the way around. And nothing binding or anything like that. Something I want to note is that if your timing was set prior to this, it should be close. Or right on, it may be uh, necessary to use a timing light to time your ignition or to uh, follow the uh, operator's manual procedures for your specific tractor in ignition, setting the ignition timing. Uh, just something uh, to be aware of that may be required. All right, so we've made a good deal of progress in the wiring. So per the instructions, and something very different from the original wiring is we're actually grounding the positive side of the coil, in this case, to the chassis. We chose uh, the uh, radiator support, sheet metal support here. Uh, took time to 
use emery cloth and shine up the metal, making sure it's a good a good connection. Um, the uh, one of the wires that has the white stripe on it coming out of the ignition module uh, actually comes up to the negative post on the coil. Now to power to provide power, the solid black wire right here connects connects. We spliced it into the ignition. Uh, wire directly from our wiring harness that used to go to the negative post on the coil. So very different from the original configuration, but that's the way you've got to do it. Next thing we did, uh, we cut our ignition or our spark plug wires to length. Now note, you've got to use silicone core spark plug wires or carbon fiber carbon core spark plug wires with ignition, uh, electronic ignition. The originals were a copper, a copper wire easy to tell you can see the copper core uh, and you want copper core wires for the old uh, uh, the old ignition setup but since we're going to electronic ignition uh, we want to go with the suppression type wires so cut it to length you might find uh, just to get a little water uh, when you slide the boots over the uh, the ends of the cable get a little water on there to make so so you can actually move it you know, slip the little ends on be the only one that I've had. Usually you try to line it up and you push the end on just like so and they kind of bite into the wire so they don't pull off. So the big boot is also worth noting the big boot goes to the coil and you push it in. <laughs> until it snaps you can kind of feel it click and then pull holding the wire kind of slide the boot over toward the end and the same thing down to our distributor cap sometimes you have to work with it just to get everything to pop into place as a tight fit which is what you want Sometimes a good tight fit is not easy to obtain. There we go. Okay. We also installed new spark plugs as well, just because while you're here, it makes sense to, to go that route. So, the moment of truth. In neutral, we're hooked up. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a few revolutions, it seems, before it kicks in. We pulled the knob off our choke cable a second ago. Guess we're going to put that on our list of Steiner tractor parts. there you have it it's pretty straightforward and simple to go with an electronic ignition kit you don't have to worry about corroded breaker points or bad condensers ever again something I always like to do on the side of my coil is write when I did the conversion and which ground it is just in case the tractor leaves my possession and goes somewhere else in the future so thanks for tuning in and good luck with your ignition kit